Yo guys, welcome back to the channel and today I have another image breakdown for you guys finally and this one has been a heavily requested image breakdown and it's one of my personal favorite shoots. So instead of going over one image, I'm going to go over a bunch of images from the set and talk about the kind of the whole day and how things went down and also show you guys some of the layers of some of the more important shots and try to bring you guys as much value as possible on what a shoot like this entailed. So yeah, let's get right into it. So I want to post up a couple images from the set here, and this is for anybody who hasn't seen this set. I want to show you guys a couple of the shots before we really dive into it. And this is by far one of my favorite shoots. I absolutely love shooting in abandoned warehouses. Anytime I can get that Beauty and the Beast, the, the beautiful car, expensive car with the abandoned grungy dungeon style. I just like really like that theme. If anybody's been following my work, they know that I kind of keep hitting it on this type of location when I can find it. And I absolutely love working in it. The downside to working in it is since you're indoors, if you want to really pull away with a remarkable photo, you kind of have to build the entire scene up. So Let's dive into the first shot and see what something like that sort of entailed. The first shot was of this beautiful SVJ. I'll tag him up on the screen here. It's Pashka the Boss, um, very well known here in Rochester. He has some beautiful cars. And um, I seen him post some pictures of this building that he was going to rent out. And I, I quickly stopped him. I said, we have to shoot your cars there before the building is not available anymore or remodeled. So he was he was on board, and I think the the next week we jumped right into it. So here was the final shot, and we're gonna go all the way down to the before and kind of go through things. I know typically I'm a bit more thorough on these, but I think since I'm showing you guys the whole set, I'm gonna try to squeeze some stuff out. I think a shot like this we'll talk more about, and then we'll go into some of the other shots. So. If you guys seen a couple of these I've posted, you know that I start off with my car selection and I put that under here as a invisible layer mask so that I could quickly like just control, click it and select the car. It's one of the most important parts to this because now when I have that selected, I could just hit shift control I and I have my background selected. Since I have my background selected, I can now work on my environment and the cars separately. I like to leave the wheels separate from that because it's pretty easy to do things to just a circle on top of that the tires a lot of the times if you're selected out you start messing with the blacks and it's touching your location that part of the car is touching your location so if you have the wheels and the blacks of the wheels kind of you know a different shade of black compared to the shadow that's under the car things are going to start looking really goofy and it can happen pretty easily when you're working in multiple layers so it's like a, it's one of the parts of the cars that i like to kind of just leave unselected and let it naturally get contrast when i'm building my location and then i'll bring the wheel in the rim in and then i'll have like a really good realistic quality dark in my tire and i think that's really important i think sometimes when you see people doing multiple layers and stuff you can tell pretty quickly in their tire that like stuff got a little wonky. So it's a, it's a little note, a um, little secret sauce to the whole madness here. Okay, so first things first, you can see that I, basically the one step we're missing here is I brought a slightly edited. This is this is a slightly this whole photo here right now is a slightly edited version in Lightroom, and then I bring it into here, and I know that that's going to be my base background image to work with the car I'm not even worried about here that's just kind of a placeholder right now right now I'm like okay I like my light here I like my light source here I like the light I'm getting here I like the fall off that I'm getting here I like this glow that I'm getting here the ground looks good it's got the contrast kind of that I want and I know that like the bones of the photo are ready I talk about that all the time so the bones of the photo are ready so after something like this now you can see I came in with my car layer and my my light basically. So an interesting note right here. So if I open up the car layer, you will see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven total car frames here. And there's a couple things that needed to happen. Um, if I click a lot of those off, that's just it's a pretty important part here. So. Um, 
you can see that this is the first layer of light that I add in, right? And this is one of the most important layers. I know obviously the car is not super lit, but right now that's my light source. I mean, I'm saying that that's kind of where my direction of light's coming from. Obviously I have this up here too, but I was sort of treating that as like a practical, um, and same with this fluorescent light. I was treating the, those as semi-practicals until later into the edit, but I was saying, hey, back here is probably one of my most, my brightest spots in the photo. So I'm gonna infer that light is coming from there eventually. So if I was gonna do that, I needed a strobe to cast me my shadow over here, right? I needed it to give me that motivated light. You'll hear me say that a lot, motivated light, because I knew I wanted to come from there. So now you can see I had like a light unit right here. Obviously you can't see it. I was further to the right and that's giving me all this spill, right? I was really wide on it, giving me my shadow, giving me like these little, you know, light, light on the ground to kind of match coming from here. You had this nice fall off back here, you know? So I'm basically acting like that light is coming from that big opening that I want you to think of that it's coming from. It's very important to me because the way I look at lighting is like I study movies and when you're watching a movie, um, you, you don't really, it's not easy to tell where their light's coming from, but in a movie, there's almost light on every single shot. Um, I think that's awesome. And I like that to replicate into my photos. Now my photos ha happen to be a little bit punchier and you can tell light was being poured on it, but it all should match it shouldn't be coming from multiple weird angles and like it will make the photo look really weird. So now we start building up the car. There's the side shot. We have the front wheel and fender. Here we got a little bit of spill on the front bumper and now the hood side of the car again. And, and the reason why I'm doing two sides of the cars is because it, you know, one would say like, Hey, you already lit that. Why'd you do it again? So like one was probably high like this. And since the car has so many of these harsh angles, it was like a little bit darker down here. So then I went back and I shot another one from like lower. And honestly, honestly, like I don't normally do that. Sometimes exotic cars will call for that. But like I saw that was a little bit darker and I said, you know what, let me just get, an, since we're here, let me get another frame of it lower in case I need it. And then when I was actually editing, I was like, oh, I want that frame. And when I built that frame back in, it, it, that one doesn't have to be 100% opacity. It can be, you know, 25, 30, just to give you a little bit of punch so it helps shape the car the way you want to shape it. Instead of being like, oh, that's just the way the light fell. I'm not, I'm done with it. So that's another important note is like you're playing with opacities and whatnot can really help you um, hone in on the, the correct light that you should put on the side of the car. So now we have a couple last little fixes. Let me just get this drawing out of there. So the car is kind of lit here and we have some a couple more fixes here. You can see when I click this on, this like weird little light was making that not match. You see how it's not matching the, the front wheel? The front wheel is nice and tinted. The back window is like getting a weird light reflection. So I darken it and then I take, you can see, right here and right here are my two problem childs. So those get zipped out. Now I got that out. And the car is, I'm pretty happy with the car. There's still a couple more issues and that gets fixed in a second. You can see I have this like yellowish tone here and here. There's some stuff that needs to be fixed. Um, and in the next couple layers, you'll see I eventually hit that. So before, before we get to that, I must have noticed it a little bit later, but before we get to that, these two frames start to add a little bit of contrast. I'm trying to add a little bit of drama into the photo. And you can see I'm starting to build it in. And I'll tend to do that slowly over over the edit. Like, okay, I think I've been looking at this long enough and it's looking a little flat. Let me add a little bit of punch to it. And then maybe in like 20, 30 minutes, I'm like, I've been looking at it a little bit. Let me add a little bit more punch into it. And um, I'll tend to do that throughout the image. And then I'll be like, oh my God, there's too much. And I'll dial some of it back or I'll lower some of the opacities and, and 
soften it back up a little bit. Um, it's just kind of a taste thing, especially when you're working in an environment like this. Like it, you never know a hundred percent where you want the edit to go. Um, obviously you want like something like this. My motive was already like darker. So I knew I wanted to go in that direction, but you know, selecting the right contrast sometimes happens naturally. And this is how I do it personally. So then I have like the graffiti back here. Um, not that it's bad. If it was a little bit cooler graffiti, I might leave it in, but I just thought it was rather distracting. It's easy enough to get it out of there. So I got it out of there. Um, I added all my smoke. Um, I compressed the smoke onto, I merged it onto one layer. Um, just looking at this, um, off the top of my head, I have one smoke here, a smoke here, and I directed it to come with this like box blur that I did here. I have another smoke here, and I have another smoke here, and then this whole smoke on the ground here is um, another layer of smoke. The smoke on the ground could have been two. I think actually now I see it right here. I, this is how much I know my smokes. Um, this is one, this is two. So the ground was two smokes. And then I had um, another smoke layer hitting the wheel. Like if you're gonna throw smoke on the on the photo, like you want it to interact with your subject because it will help sell that like there was smoke and um, it builds the atmosphere. The, the smoke is interacting with your vehicle. So it just makes it look a little bit more believable when you're faking it. Um, you know, you could bring a smoke machine. I almost like, there's some instances where you can do that. I almost like doing it like this just because I have true control. If you're ever messing with haze and smoke, you can start to like lose focus and um, like light will start hitting the smoke and then it won't like go on the car exactly the same way or you'll have like, you'll be lighting clouds while you're out there. It's like, it can get a little crazy. So um, that's another note to keep um, in mind. I'm not saying it's terrible. Like a lot of the pros, like they definitely use like smoke and haze machines. Um, but you have to, you have to really know what you're doing and, and put it in the right spots so that it doesn't affect other elements of the photo when you're building that up. So, but yeah, so that's the smoke. I'm going to kind of try to fly through these next couple steps. You can see I added like a little light hit up there, up in the top. Um, this was like a little atmosphere blur. You can see if I like zoom into these, this little area, um, and you keep your eye here or like here, you'll see like a blur haze going on. And that's like... You can see it just kind of like softens things up. You almost see like a glow come around the door edges. Look at the door edges when I click it on and off. And um, that's just adding like a little bit of haze. It pulls your eye away from the background and fights it back towards the car, um, which I'm always trying to do. Um, so now we have two little ones for the dark um, color balances. One's for the dark, one's for the brights. Um, I'll do a... A whole video I think on color balancing because I color balance a little differently than I see most people color balancing and I think you get a lot of control when you do it this way so I think I should do it like a separate video on it and um, you know if that's something that interests you guys like let me know in the comments so that I can put that out there for you guys if you guys need help color balancing um, or color like adding color not just balancing like adding a color influence to the photos a color theory um, so the next one, I'm adding a glow. I want, again, I'm trying to really infer that the light is coming from that direction. So I add a little bit of glow there. Now you can see here, I finally was like, what the heck's that yellow on my fender? Um, I can't draw for some reason. Right here, if I click this on and off, you'll see I fix that little golden haze that's coming through. Um, right after that, I... Right after that, you can see I add like a little punch to the wheels and I added the punch to the reflection as well. I thought the reflection was a little too dark, so I, I made it hit the reflection as well. And um, yeah, you know, the wheels just needed a tiny bit more color and a tiny bit more um, punch because there was falling off some of the hot spots at the side of the car. I wanted it to kind of match the same lighting. So now you can see this is like really, really tiny details, but like this stuff kind of, I think goes a long way. So like that reflection I took from out here, if you look right here, you can see that 
I take it out there too. I notice it at the end, which I'm glad I noticed it because I mean, I don't know if a lot of people will notice that, but like in the long run, when you like are looking back at photos, you're like, and you work on photos like this a lot, you're like, you catch things, you're like, ah, you know, that that bothers me. Same thing right right here. Same thing with the front. I have this nice little orange ember here, but I desaturated this. Like, that's not good, right? That's a mistake. So um, in my final edit, like I actually go back, I went back and found that little, um, the, f the one frame I had, I think this was a total of like 10, 15 frames. I found like the one frame I had with the headlights on and I grabbed my, the little like parking light basically and uh, added it back into my reflections there. So you can see that I added it there. And then the final image is, I'll zoom out just to see and you can see I add like a little different color shift and desaturation to the overall car. I add the headlights, a little bit more light on the wheels, and I clean up some of the edges on the car. That is the final shot of the SVJ here, the, the main shot, that cover shot basically, the one that I really wanted to get done. Now I'm playing with house money basically. So. Now we can dive into a couple of the other shots. And these other ones, I'm not going to go fully in. I'm just going to briefly talk about them. Let's pull them up. So a really popular one from the shoe is this one. One of my favorites as well. I mean, it just looks like sinister. Like the car is just like, you just kind of stumble. The, like when you walk in a room and, you know, the eyes look over at you like you just walked into the wrong room. Um, that's kind of the shot I was going for. So, you know, the let me show you guys the before on this one because this one's actually pretty wild. All right, so let me guys let me show you guys at least the before and after on this one. This one is a popular one from the set. A lot of people love this one. Um, and I feel like it's just one of those types of shots where, like, you walked in a room and it's a room you're not supposed to be in and they're just staring you down. And that's kind of the vibe this one gets. It's a It's very sinister and... I think it really fits the car kind of perfectly. Basically, let's show you guys the before on this one. And that's the before. Now, sure, you know, could you, let's just dive into like what you could do with just one photograph. Like let's bring up camera raw and sure, highlight goes down, fill light comes up, we're underexposed, so we're gonna brighten. You know, you guys get it. Like, there's not, you know, there's probably still a, a cool photo you can get out of this, um, other than like that that hood being too bright. But obviously, I'm being a bit dramatic here. But you know, let's put a little color grade on it, and you know, it it just it's gonna be really hard to get a photo like this to have the the level of um atmosphere and the dramatic look without like doing all the other stuff that I do um you know yeah th like if I'm spending more time on this we could probably get it somewhere I could select out here and darken out here and whatnot but then again you're starting to play the game that I'm playing um but you know I just want to show you guys the before and the after so you know, this is pretty bare and it has nothing, but, you know, I have that light here, which is telling me that behind this wall, there is a light coming from there. So I'm like, okay, that's a bright spot in my room. Let's let that be my lead light. And since I'm going to let that be my lead light, I can come in here and start like, boom, there's, there's the, uh, the lit layer of the car, right? So I went over here got like a little light stand right look at this beautiful drawing and i'm br blasting one light and like the shot of the car is pretty much done because i'm i'm going off the scene i i'm not i don't have to pour light all over the car because then that won't that won't look right it won't be um it won't make sense you know to like the when you're when you're really like kind of picking up an image apart it won't make sense so basically the car is done at that point and then the rest is like selecting out you know the box here and then having 
you know, again, the same thing is like, I got the car, I have the box, I have the two boxes, right? So now I have like this as one layer, I can reverse it all and mess with just this. I can reverse it and select the car. So I have this. And when I reverse this box and I hit shift control I, I have all of this. So it's like, it's like I'm thinking about the photo and like a, like a layering a cake, right? I want to be able to edit every layer of my photo separately. And when you do that, you can start doing crazy things. So then I add like right there, that's like a box blur. Um, basically just drawing like a triangular selection and then adding um, the color tone of light that you want in. Then you're going to put it on a screen layer and, and use the box blur and the way it blurs it out is um, kind of like blurs out the edges more than the middle. Kind of looks like how like a, ha a hazy light would look in like the fog basically. So um, that's what I did there. And then I'm just going to click all this stuff on. Um, you can see I turned on the eyes, the headlights. Um, I added like this little bit of smoke. And then once I added a little bit of smoke, I was like, oh man, more smoke needs to come from my light. Um, added smoke in the foreground. Um, this is uh, interesting too. So I was like, hey, if I'm going to infer that lights coming from over there, there'd probably be a little bit spilling on my ground into the garage. So I added like a little light pop. Um, let me get a drawing layer. I add like a little light pop down here. You can see it come back at the photo right there. And then I darkened everything up and added my color grade. Um, sometimes the darkening is like literally like an S curve and like you're pulling down on the darks. Sometimes you're grabbing the darkest point and fading the blacks for more of like a faded cinematic. Here I can tell that I did both because I got pretty dark here, but this is like a nice consistent fade. So... Um, sometimes I'll let that affect my car. Sometimes I'll say, hey, only 50% of it affect my car because I want my car to pop out of that a little bit more. I, I don't want to fade my car out. Um, and it's just a kind of a tactic to like get the image to pop out more. Um, let's go in to the one of these shots here where the, like the light is like coming down from the ceiling and whatnot. Um, let me open up the PSD. All right, so now that we're in here, um, I was really excited to work on these ones. I did not expect light to be coming from the roof. Um, it's like a dream to have like rays coming from the roof. Um, obviously, if you ever shot rays, sometimes they can be very subtle and light. Um, so in this, in this specific garage, there was like, in, see in the raw here, you don't even see light rays. The, so there, this photo right here is being lit by the by the light up in the ceiling. It's not even strobed. So there was really good light coming in. And when we moved the car around in the exhaust, like smoke would kick up. And then we would see rays. But it wasn't consistent enough to be working as a composite. And it wasn't um, strong enough to like make an impact on the photo. It was really, really subtle. And I didn't want to like add all this extra exposure light for the ceiling I wanted that to kind of still be dark so um, I decided to go composite style with the light rays so this was the before and here's the after so you can see I obviously went a way more dramatic and I think like this whole shoot is dramatic this whole shoot is fantasy like this car is never going to be in this building and it's okay to have fun with the edits and really do some stuff that's like on your mind and what was on my mind when I saw like the smoke kind of kicking up is like I was like in the edit I want these crazy rays coming down and I want it to be like godlike basically and um I wanted it to like you know have like this movement of smoke that they they were coming down so the rays I did an overall box blur like I was mentioning before then I had a couple of rays on black um, light rays on black that I found one that fit that kind of looked like it was coming through bars basically so like you can see it like here like this little light ray that little light ray and that little light ray there those are all one ray um, you can see these dust particles I added in these little dust particles kind of almost looks like snow but that's like little dust um, 
you know, atmosphere dust. If you find um, elements on, you know, Google and stuff or like stuff like Envato Im um, elements and some of these stock images, like you can find these things on transparent. And um, so I needed a little bit of dust and then I added smoke in the rays to really make it kind of seem like what I was visualizing when I was actually there, but I couldn't articulate it in one photograph. So, um, yeah, and then I added a smoke here, smoke here. I got to use natural light. So this this photo, I mean, there's a lot of layers still here, but, like, this photo was really fun to work on because I'm using kind of natural light here, and it just was like, hey, this worked out. Um, I wanted to have this green cast here. I loved the way this like practical was like kind of lighting some of my scene back there. So I was like, okay, in some of the frames, like it's pretty dark back there. But I was like, I needed to, I needed to pump that up just a tad because I had like a practical back there saying, hey, there's information back here. And when I seen that, I was like, I kind of want them to see a little bit of the grunge, a little bit of the... I don't want it to look so unknown on this shot. So we're going to back those things off. Um, I'll click through a couple of the layers. I'm not going to like go through and like explain this one like crazy. But I'll just click on a couple, and you guys can just see a couple of the things changing. So there's some of the rays. Just building it up. There's some of the smoke added into the rays. There's a little screen light pop. There's my smoke, my tails little glow on the tails just to, to say hey it's getting smoky in front of it and like things are getting affected and there's a glow there kind of add like a little bit of layer to the light um kind of give it a little attitude um there's dust particles there's a little glow on my light bar back there and then the overall color the color grade is you know a little bit of like cyan and then like a little green in the background with um a little yellow in the highlights so that, uh, that's that image and another one of my favorites from the shoe. I, I don't think, um, I don't know if that one really gets like the buzz like the other ones, but like I really enjoy like, it, you know, sometimes you're just working on an image and you're like, yeah, that's what I wanted that to look like. So, um, you know, it's always good when that happens. All right. So next we're going to go into the shot. That's the flamethrower basically. Um, a little bit of a different shot. This one was never in my mind. This is the type of stuff that happens like improv when you're doing a shoot like this. Um, Paul's a little bit crazy, so he will do kind of whatever. He doesn't care, um, which is amazing for a photographer. So um, Eric Wynn, and I'll post his up, he um, helped me kind of with the speed of it, but more so he like did some video stuff I was like man this is gonna be such a crazy day like there needs to be video done and I'm only gonna be able to focus on the photos because I know how in-depth I wanted to go so what we did was he shot a lot of video and in one of the video frames he kind of wanted Paul to launch the car and I was like man this thing spits huge flames what an opportunity it would be to you know try to capture that <laughs> So when you're working on something like that, I'm not going to, he's literally launching the car here. Like I'm not going to have the luxury of lighting the car. So here's my before frame. Now check that out. That's the frame we came away with. Um, a lot of things happening here, a lot of issues happening here. And, and I will go into this one a little bit more just because you have sunlight up there and we're color, we're, we're, you know, white balancing for our car and our flame license plate we have another sunlight up here somehow the sunlight up here is casting green and the sunlight up here is casting blue this light bar this is a fluorescent light bar is casting another weird blue his headlights are casting blue out there is so many color issues like this is an, a color correcting nightmare there's so many different styles of light going on here not to mention you have like the leds the, that you get these weird reflections on the car and uh you know th this is the before and this is the after basically and and i'm not using strobe here this is all you know natural light this is all i should say available light this was one of the rooms that kind of had decent light so we're like let's do it in there for the sake of the video 
We're like, let's do it in there so we don't need to like mess with artificial lighting when he's trying to launch a car. We knew the car was going to spit flame, so that was the main focus. So I'm dragging this. You can tell that I'm not dragging it too much. Um, let's get a new layer here. I'm not dragging it too much because I still have like a nice flame. If you if you really shutter drag a flame, it'll look like a you know Harrier jet. It will just like look like a little cone, right, coming out the back. Whereas if you really freeze it, you kind of get like a little bit more um, motion, I guess you could say, in the in the flames. Um, so yeah, I managed to get. I'm shooting burst here, kind of too, like click, 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 just to try to get a couple of different flames. This was the best one. Some of the other ones were like a bit shorter. This was like my the longest one I got, and I was honestly, this is all I needed. This was like, holy crap, that's insane. Um, I'd seen this and I was like, I have a lot of work to do, but I know I can figure something out. So, um, if I click off on that, I'll show you guys again. I'm just going to, again, I'm going to go through it and build it up. So not, not step by step. I'm just gonna let you guys see it fast. So, you know, I got the headlights. I got the, I had to put a glow in from the flame. I put a, another warmth coming from the flame just to say, Hey, that's pretty hot. I want to emphasize warmth there um clicking on now you can see i'm starting to put my rays back in i the reason why i did that is like i was like hey if i'm going to do it on the rear shot i need to do it in these other shots when that light is called for because i want the shoot to kind of match so i kind of did it for the entire shoot whenever i had like light coming from the ceiling i was like i'm going to add those rays in to keep things kind of of the same style um a big pet peeve of mine is like when you're shooting in a location like this and like none of the shoot matches like to me it's like super important it like it's like that professional sauce when like the entire shoot kind of meshes and blends and it's the same story and style like that's very important to me um and i think that's like what takes like a very good amateur to that pro level i think that's like the you know the cherry on the cake is when like your set of images all go together so um, I'm adding in my little light rays there. I add this light rays in. Got to color correct those once I add them in because they're white. Um, I add a glow. You can see I'm darkening my floor now. I'm adding smoke. Um, then a couple of these layers are, a lot of them are just like color grading. So you can see like I'm very green here and I start to go blue. And um, that's not where I fully ended up, but like I was trying to get away from that dingy green like that I was getting like up here. This was very green. I'm starting to get away from that. Um, I add smoke coming in from my ceiling and my light rays just to get a little bit of movement and motion. Um, I add smoke around the car. Um, also, like I had the car selected. So some of those like color grades and some of these like color grades and curves that you're seeing down here in the layers like I'm slowly bumping up and brightening the car and then I'm slowly like desaturating and um, manipulating the car's color to be like more grayscale than like half blue half green half yellow like we didn't want any of that we want more consistent paint right and when i'm doing all those changes i'm not letting it affect the italian flag and like the red tail lights and the red part of the j on the svj so we end up getting there on that image so one more time i'll click it all off so we had this and that turns into that and you can see like the weird blue reflections gone um and like the top of the car makes a little bit more sense i have light coming from here so it's naturally like my brightest spot should be there um same thing with like the front this is casting like a weird overexposure here and that was just so far gone that like if i tried to fight that back it was just like really flat light so i was just like forget it let's just leave it bright for a shot like this who cares um but it makes sense that like i would have some pretty bright spots on the front of my car and rim lighting my rear view mirror there. And uh, yeah, when you come away with a photo like this, um, I did shutter drag it after because I knew I wanted to do like a two post carousel and that was this. And again, I kind of did similar things. You can tell the color grades a little bit different, but like I wanted to do a two post carousel where like 
it was the flame shot and then it was the shot of him like actually launching the car and i was like man if he's gonna launch the car i'm just gonna let this camera eat and capture that movement and um it naturally kicked up a little bit of smoke but then i was like okay again to follow the vibe of my overall shoot i want to add in a couple of those elements that I'm adding in on all the other photos to have it like make sense basically. So then again, we add this in, we add that in this car is going very fast in a small area and trained professionals. Of course, um, you know, you got your smoke here, you got smoke here, smoke here from the movement and you get a photo like that. I, I definitely shot once I had my flame shot, he like kind of paused for a second and then he let like it go to the two step and let it kind of go. Um, during that, I lowered the camera down. Oh, man, I can't remember the shutter. And these are way too composite style photos to go back and see the shutter. But um, I was shooting pretty slow. I want to say it was like a tenth of a second, maybe right around that. And uh you know, just drag the shutter out to get like the lights blurring basically. So that's how I did that. And yeah. Okay. So like lastly, you know, another, another thing about just like the shoot going together, you have like this image and this image. So like this image is very similar to the other front image, right? I have, I'm shooting the cars in the exact same spot and I'm shooting the, just from the back now. So where was my light on the front shot? It was over here. So, you know, I wouldn't want on this shot my light to be over here now. It, it makes less sense. Plus, we already knew that I had my, my motivated light was up here. Like, if I didn't have any strobe layer on this, my motivated light was up here. So I grabbed my main, and then, like, I did my whole thing. I select the car out. I inverse selected it, added a dark layer here. You know, I wanted you to see these practicals. I like if there's going to be practicals in the background, I kind of like that to like add to the to the photograph. So I wanted like some elements back there to to say, hey, we were over there at one point shooting that shot. Right. So like the viewers like, oh, this isn't fake. This is real. This is they were really here with this car. Like, man, that must have been a crazy day like that sort of stuff. So um, I had a strobe here to make the light more dramatic and it was just one strobe and I had it slightly towards the back and you can tell because it hits like here but then it like wraps just a little bit and like catches a little bit of this but then there's a fall off on this corner and um, you know that's basically just a, a decision and again going off a of motivated light and letting that like build your scene and then being like okay this is how I'm going to build this image up with my strobe and the strobe helps you like emphasize that motivated light on the car because a lot of times that motivated light isn't like even enough or spread out the right way or spilled the right way. So, um, that's what we did here. I can see that this is getting a little long. If you guys are still here, um, I really appreciate you guys sticking around again. This is like one of my favorite shots. So like talking about this one is like, I get super nerdy on this. Um, but if you guys are still here and this is bringing you guys some value, like please definitely help me out with any likes on the video and whatnot. That would be greatly appreciated. So, um, yeah, let's, there's one more I want to dive into. And, um, that was like the group shot. So let's get into that. Um, there was this image too. Um, I needed this to like, you, you can see now this wall here, you'll remember it from the rear shot that I was talking about with the God rays coming down. Um, you'll recognize it because the texture, I was shooting really shallow on this little corner at the rear of my car. I think it was like, there was one like over here and I was shooting at like 70 millimeters or something like that. Um, but I, again, it's the same situation where like I wanted this motivated light with the rays. I wanted it to match my scene and match my photos from the other set. So again, I have it like haloing um, on this one. I actually did strobe because the light when it was coming through I was getting like a fall off like right here so I did do one I gave myself one strobe of like this the side of the car and I said okay when I'm back at home if I need like a little bit more light back here I know I'll have it 
and um, I won't be like stretching the natural light too much because I know it looks bright here, but like it was in order to get things exposed right, like the darks were really dark and the brights were really bright or you like you had to make a decision there because of the nature of this building basically. So let's click that off. I added the smoke around the car. I wanted that to interact with the car. I added the smoke coming out of the rays. And again, I wanted this to be, you know, a very secluded, isolated, abandoned shot. I loved the texture I was getting on this wall. And then, like, the car is just perfectly let in with, you know, the HREs and whatnot. It's just, you know, another one of my favorites. Um, so now let's get into that last one. I'm not going to go into some of the other detail photographs of the shoot. Um, the last one, I will kind of go, like layer by layer i'll try to do it a little bit quicker just because uh the sake of time okay so the last image i want to talk to you guys about is this one and um, some of you guys might have seen the uh, mini image breakdown that i put on instagram but let's talk about it a little bit since we're here and um this is what i mean so we had like multiple people there because he actually owns three of these cars and um he wanted to do a group shot he's like hey at the end of it can we just get a group shot i'm like yeah that's going to take a little bit of time the way I work basically. Um, but I said, if you're okay with that, then yes, hundred percent. And, um, he was down and you know, this is, uh, the other interesting thing too, is I actually did like a mini shoot on the 488 Pista while we were there. Um, kind of the same situation. Um, I'll just pull up a couple. So, while we were there, I even shot his 48 Pista. So you can tell I was I was moving pretty quickly. I'm pretty sure I lost weight that day. I was sweating. Um, you know, I was doing a lot of the lighting by myself, um, except for the group shot. The group shot, again, I had Eric Wynn there shooting video, and he's like, I got your back. I'll, I'll help you out with, um, you know, the lighting on this one. And thank God, because I'm standing on a vehicle in that one. But, um, yeah, so I have, like... A whole nother mini set of the Ferrari in different corridors and different like little spots that we didn't shoot the SVJ in. and this is what I meant by like there was just so much to do in there that I was like I was in like abandoned car heaven um, but yeah so here we are with this shot let me click everything off so here was the final image and here's the before so the before is pretty ugly and uh you know looking back at this looking back at just the frame of the the raw there's a lot of work to do here um you guys can see how i'm lighting cars so when i do one car it's pretty extensive so you can only imagine when i do four i have to do and in the file was my file is 2.20 gigs when I was working on this file and I had all the car layers in here, I, I had I had to flatten some of the car layers because um, I was around like four gigs, four and a half gigs of, of um, you know, file size. And it was starting to get a little clunky. So you can see here that I have all my cars selected out. Um, and the cool thing about like doing it that way is I could just hit could just shift click with control and now I have all my cars so since I have all my cars I can hit control shift I and now I have my entire background selected so you know it, it always starts with selection and when you're doing composite stuff like this like some of the AI selection and the selection through the cloud and stuff is getting really good but sometimes it's just not good enough when you're working this tight with like this many layer masks you still kind of need to manually select I, I still personally don't think we're truly there with being able to get away with like doing composites and like just letting ai select it in some situations you can especially depending on how you're going to handle that file i feel like you're going to drop a background in there and stuff but like typically you know this is i i'm manually selecting everything here um but it goes a long way when you're when you're working on everything. So let me click on. So boom, you can see the SVJs clicked in. I'm gonna kind of fly through this again. So now you can see like, okay, I'm happy with my SVJ there. The SVJ was three three or four shots, three shots. 
Um, I'm just going to go through that quickly because you can see like my garage door. Oh, I'm going to have to go yellow or something here. Red? Red. Um, my garage door is creating a nasty highlight here. Um, I knew I wanted to use this frame with my headlights. Um, so I went up here with a light kind of spilling like this. And now I'm shooting very dark so that that highlight didn't affect my car. You can still see that it kind of does a little bit, but I think that that works out just fine. Um, but yeah, so I have this light. I have Eric kind of standing here, right? And he's holding the light as high as he can. He's super tall. Like Eric's like, I don't know, six, five, you know, close to seven foot. And, uh, you know, he's holding the light up here for me. I wish, I wish, I wish, but yeah. So he's holding the light up here and basically creating me one or two spills. And then I think we did one from over here, but this one was lightly used. So that one is done. And uh, then I just did like an overall curves layer. I was like, okay, I want to make that a little bit more punchy. It, it didn't have, um, the light quality that I wanted throughout the whole thing. So now I'm on the Ferrari, uh, the Ferrari and I have, let me see if I can go back to this layer. I have a light. Why is that not letting me draw? I have a light here and then I slide down the car light here, slide down and I come over here and I light the back. So let me click those layers on and there. And now we're over by the Porsche. Let me reset here. I'm going to click the Porsche on. Um, pretty much the same thing. So since I was working so fast, I was like, hey, I need to figure out how to do this relatively quickly. I, we've already been out here for like three hours. I know the shot's already going to take me like 45 minutes to like almost an hour. So I tried to like light the cars in like a three light setup, I'd say, which actually kind of worked out. I luckily had two silver cars and then the Ferrari I thought was going to be like pretty annoying to light. The Ferrari was amazing to light. Like that thing was a dream. Um, so I, th I think I actually only used like two photos and maybe three photos with the Ferrari, but the, the other one, the other, the STO, um, Dennis, you guys have seen me shoot Dennis's STO. His was in the back and his is black. So that's not ideal. Um, but I basically had to shoot a really dark frame and then dump light onto there with a soft box. And um, it was just a one light. Um, if you really zoom in, you should see it's a one light setup. And I'm just picking up like, you know, so the spoiler, the exhaust. And the back of the STO, there's like a lot of this like black, this flat black, which luckily like helps me get separation on the car. And, um, you know, again, everything is coming from the motivated light. I guess you could say this doesn't come from the motivated light. Um, I carried the shadow from the motivated light. Uh, so, you know, the decision there is like, I didn't want the car to get lost. And I knew it was going to add haze back in to kind of fight that incorrect lighting, basically. Um, so let's click a bunch of other layers on color grade I'm shifting to green there I'm basically trying to get like more of like the look from the rest of the shoot now I add a glow in from the door now I start adding my visual effects in um, rays box blurs smoke um, light hits now I needed that smoke to carry and the rays to carry to like the Ferrari and then like subtly fade to the Lambo I didn't want it to like fully fill everything because obviously the further away the smoke gets from the light there's going to be like less smoke visible because the smoke really gets visible when it's being backlit so like i'm trying to have the smoke naturally come from light um that's a big a big thing for me so and then the final photo i add on i add in my license plates and the headlight and tail lights and then there we go we got the final image and that's pretty much most of the shoot um there's a couple of detail shots that I left out um but again it's like kind of following the same suit and I'm just shooting like a one light setup on a detail so this is you know I'm excited to finally 
show this one off. I've been wanting to show this off. I've been wanting to do a video on like kind of the whole shoot, but I was like, man, it's, you know, it's going to be a long one that, you know, I, we're coming up on an hour here. So if you're still here, um, I really, really appreciate it. And, uh, I hope this kind of shed a little bit of light on like what goes into a shoot like this. This I'd say is like, kind of like, I call this like my Holy grail, like my cream of the crop. Like a lot of people know me also for composites. I would say like this style shoot where it's, this is still composite cause you're composite lighting. But like, I'd say like this and like full on background changes and stuff is like my Holy grail or like my top package of like, if somebody's like, Hey, I want, the full experience I want the full look this is kind of what I'm going for this isn't like the same style as like how you'd shoot a feature for a magazine or something editorial this is like more so commercial you're being really thoughtful on like every element of the photograph and truly building up the entire scene and when you're shooting indoors it's very um unforgiving when you're shooting because if you're not thinking about the entire space and not just your subject, you're probably going to come away with an only an okay photograph. Um, but yeah, so this is what kind of goes into it. A heavy, heavy strobes. Um, I, again, appreciate you guys. If you guys have been here for this long, I hope that you guys are able to pull some of these nuggets out. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Am I going too fast on these? Should I keep it just one image? Did you guys like how this was all a bunch of images from the entire set? Um, I'm really looking for your guys' insight to kind of help me dial in the channel and, you know, bring you guys value. Also, I think that this will probably lead me into like my next couple videos, which would be like, I want to do a color grading video, an ultimate guide to like lighting a vehicle. I think that that one, there's not a lot of great information out there. There's people talking about lighting a vehicle, but, um, an ultimate guide. Um, if some of those things are interested or like, I want to see that one before this one, don't waste your time on that one. Do this one. This is what we really want. Like some of those comments, um, can help me put some of these other things to the front of the list so that I'm not talking about something maybe most of you guys already know. I'm talking to a wide range of you guys. I'm assuming I'm talking to like people that are pretty damn good at this. And also we're probably talking with some people that like are just getting into car photography. So I'm trying to keep that in mind and keep things semi broad, but also like, I don't want to give you guys like the stuff that we all already know. I want to really kind of try to help you guys grow and show you guys th what these short what goes into these sort of shoots so but yeah so i appreciate you guys stopping by and checking another video out if you're still here um and be on the lookout for the next video thank you guys